Hey guys, Cody Schwabe here, and today I just want to talk to you about some of the tools that I use to create some of the paintings that I've made, and just to talk to you about like the fact that tools do not make you a better painter. And what I mean by that, and the reason I say that is because a lot of times we kind of get wrapped up in thinking that if we just had the best this or that, that we would be better at something. Like if I only had, you know, better brushes or better paint or better canvases or better whatever, that that would make me a better painter. Or let me give you another example. When I was a marketer, I thought that by having the best funnels or the best ads or the best looking website, that that would somehow make me better at marketing. But the truth is, is that if you look at all the people who have really made it in, in, you know, in life and stuff like that, um, or the people who were truly successful, they probably started out with very little and they just made, they did the best with what they had. So ultimately the core message of this video is just doing the best with what you have and just investing slowly. Like don't buy off more than you can chew. What I did is I just bought a bunch of stuff um, that I thought I needed and I only used part of it, right? And some of it I even hate and I don't like, but I, you know, I put in all this money thinking that I somehow needed that to be better and, and it didn't make me a better painter, only painting and investing in the stuff that I actually needed, like paint and canvases is really the only thing that I have to keep buying. Maybe varnish and stuff like that, but you, you kind of get my point, I hope. So let me show you some of the tools I use and kind of go over like whether you need it or not and really just why I bought it and, and you know, just to kind of drive home that point of just do the best with what you've got. And once you kind of find your style or the, the things that you're comfortable with doing and you get really good at those things, you'll kind of spread out from there, but really just focus on what you're good at now. So let me kind of go over that. So first off, let me talk about um, fluid acrylics, right? So I didn't talk about these in my other painting video. Um, fluid acrylics are literally like you, you pour them and they, um, like they just pour really easily, right? Um, I don't want to waste it, but at the same time, you know, I'll use this medicine. I use this to like measure. Now you see how that, like there's almost no paint in that, right? Um, this is Artist Loft. And again, going back to you get what you pay for, um, these were on sale. So like I wanted to try them, so I bought them, right? And basically fluid acrylics are exactly what you think they are. They're just really fluid. Like they're usually, you, you use them for like line work like that, right? You use them to write. So, um, I use those for a lot of like the writing kind of stuff like that. Um, but now I actually have kind of gravitated towards uh, using the, um, the gloss enamel uh, for writing because it gives it like a certain shine like that. I think I didn't write with gloss enamel. So it's just kind of, it's just acrylic. So it's smooth, but it's not shiny. And I'm all about that shine. Um, I've got some mini scrapers. These are really good for kind of putting like uh kind of like heavy body acrylic on top of like a, a canvas or something um so i i'd invest in some of these i don't see the one that i normally use oh this one is is probably the one you'll use the most if you buy a package of these this one is actually really good it's kind of soaking right now but um this is just a metal one that i use so use that um use doritos because that helps you somehow um i got a bunch of these little bottles um i got these from a, a beauty supply store um but if you want some if you want some that are like more wide mouth you can get these from actually walmart for a dollar so you can get a bunch of them for a dollar they're really good for um again for the line work so this is what i use to actually write the lines um so i'd invest in some of these um what else well painter's tape you'll probably want to get some of that if you're going to do hardcore lines like this okay so these, uh, you know, I tape these off and then I just painted it and then um, that was it. So, uh, what else? Water bottles, get some water bottles, those come a long way. Um, I use crates. This is actually my work table. I didn't go over this in, in my studio video, but really this is what I work on. Oh, that, that actually reminds me. Okay, so this this easel is, an, is a perfect example of what I was talking about. So. I bought this easel, right, thinking that I needed an easel, and I told myself I needed an easel, so I bought it, um, and it was like a hundred, hundred something dollars, right? It's a great easel. It, it actually works really well. I almost never use it. 
Um, I'm actually more comfortable painting flat on something like it's a, a bar stool with a bucket or a crate of paint and then just a I think like a 12 by 24 board across it like that's my table that's what I'm comfortable now on bigger ones like that over there um, I'll actually set up a table here I have a couple of card tables so I'll use those um, when I need to do a big piece but anyways moving on so um, obviously paint brushes you'll want to get different ones of different sizes these really thick brushes are good for like um, covering the canvas or for, for blending um, the flatter ones are good for just putting on a single coat uh, the angle ones are good for lines you know just obviously brushes now you don't need super expensive brushes you can throw them away later even the bit even the good ones have a tendency to kind of like lose the bristles after a while so <laughs> excuse me okay um let's talk about what's in here right so i have different paints i have modeling paste to give the canvas texture um what else do i got i've got yeah more modeling paste okay so what the, these are just large like um containers of artist loft paint which is just a cheaper paint but i use these for like base coats or something so like the cheaper paint i'll use to kind of like base coat um, or if I absolutely cannot get a color that I need out of like basics or something, I'll use these. But really what I like about these is I like use, reusing the containers. So what's in here is actually um, regular paint, like, you know, the, the regular paint that I use and a, a little bit of water or pouring medium, whatever you want to use. I would say pouring medium or like airbrush medium is better because it's going to, not water it down as much and it's going to give you more vibrant color but if you don't have the money for that stuff or you can't find it just a little bit of water now i have never actually seen a video where someone actually stored wet like super wet paint a lot of times you'll see them like just put them in the cups and like pour them so like for example this painting right here was all poured with liquid like watered down paint so all I did was I took a, a bottle of paint, put it in one of these empty containers, added water, and used this. I love these containers for just for that fact, for storing super wet paint, because obviously it seals and I can just pour it. Um, I can like twist the cap off and pour it. So it stores really well and it's great for shaking the paint. Like you don't have to use a little stick. You just put your paint in here, you put the water and you shake it up and then you can pour it. So. That's like, I love these containers just for that. So that's what I use these containers for. And then I, I marked them like pouring, right? So I know. Um, wax paper, I use a lot of wax paper um, because I paint off of the wax paper, especially if I'm mixing colors. Um, just more big brushes to cover it. Um, I'm assuming that's pretty much it. Oh, okay. So let me also kind of go over some of the uh some of the other smaller things right so i watched all these videos when i first started of people making textures and stuff like that right and i saw a guy his name is john Becker. you can search for him and he does some really cool paintings he does a lot of like i would call it urban abstract art and he has something that makes these ridges right and I always like was jealous of that because I could not find a tool like this. I got this at Ace Hardware and I just use it to like make the little lines in the painting. And I couldn't find one and I was so mad and I finally found that and I used it and I hated it. So my point out of that is that I thought I needed that and I was really frustrated because I couldn't find one and I finally found one. Like I finally, finally found one of these like little ridge scrapers and like I don't even like the look that it creates. So again, don't think that just because everybody else uses this something that you have to. Anyway, um, like the well, same thing as like this, right? Just like this scraper to scrape the paint across. I think it, I thought I needed one of those. Um, yeah, I don't. Um, I would say that these are good investments for scraping, and I'll show you an example of that. And these, not not this. That I thought that was the right thing. It wasn't. Um, let me see what else. Uh, there's just some bowls. Rollers are okay. Um, if you're base coating, you might want to invest in a roller. What else do we have? Um, oh, okay. So I have a big paint bucket that I just like 
keep filled with water to soak my stuff, okay? Um, now, this stuff in here I actually do recommend um, because it's cheap and I have seen great results with it, which I'll actually show in another video, okay? So first off is this uh, spatula. It's I actually couldn't find it for a long time and I didn't know why, um, but then I found out like, it's in like the baking aisle uh, at Walmart. <laughs> so I found it at Walmart and it's like, I think I want to say like, I think it was like five bucks or something. Um, so this is just actually an icing spatula um, that you use for like cake, right? But these are great for putting paint on the canvas because um, unlike those flat scrapers over there, um, the paint will tend to build up on that type of scraper because you're only getting the edge of it. But this, you can put the paint all along the bottom and you can just kind of tilt it depending on how you need to get the paint. So I would actually invest in one of these scrapers and I'm going to show you why because some of my best paintings or favorite paintings have come out using that. The other thing I'd invest in is a, is a rubber scree squeegee. Actually, I would invest in a couple of them um, of different sizes, like a big, a medium, and a small. I actually only have the one, but I actually, like after using it a few times and getting some of the results I've gotten, dude, I am sold on the squeegee. It is awesome, dude. This thing is amazing. A rubber scraper, squeegee, whatever it's called, right? Um, and I'll show you why. So let me let me show you why I suggest getting those. And again, I mean, obviously here I am telling you you don't need the same things as everybody else, but I'm going to show you why I like it, and then you can decide for yourself. So th this painting right here is actually a really cool painting, and I actually like it a lot. It's super simple, right? But this background that you see, like the, uh, the whole turquoise black, it's hard to see because of the glare, I think, from like from the sun and everything. But um, this was all done, like all of the turquoise and black was done with, with just that rubber squeegee um, or scraper, whatever you want to call it, right? The window scraper. Um, that whole thing, the whole background was just done with that. So it was just done with water and paint and that squeegee. So you know, you're able to create these really cool um, backgrounds. Actually, I'm trying to think, what else did I... Um, I have other paintings that I've used it for. Um, I don't think I have any out here, but no, it actually creates an, a really cool picture. Oh yeah, and these scrapers. So like, like I, I've shown you the scrapers, the small ones are actually my favorite because um, let me show you some examples. So um, this one right here, you can see like the lines, like the texture. So that was actually done with the scraper, those the little scraper I just showed you, like a yellow one, or you could actually use that, or if you can't find those, you can actually use like old credit cards um, as scrapers too. Um, this piece right here, let's see if I, can, I have it. Yeah, this one right here, actually, um, all of that is with scrapers. So, you know, it, it kind of creates this, it creates this pretty cool like texture. I like it. Um, and it gives it gives the paintings like you know more more than just like a flat look right that scrape look I, I really like that because it, it gives a texture so I'd recommend like I would recommend getting uh, some of those plastic scrapers uh, for that reason and then okay so let me also this piece right here um, the ties that bind it's actually for sale and it's actually hands down probably my favorite piece I've ever done right it's pretty sweet it's got a lot of different textures and a lot of different things going on so it's got the black background um and this the big red like like almost s looking thing uh was done with just red paint and a scraper so i literally just kept scraping it over and over so that it spread out um and then it created that background right um, and then I splattered paint with the paintbrush and then I drew the lines with those little bottles or whatever. Um, and that, you know, that created that painting and that, again, that's one of my favorites. So, um, that's pretty much it. I would say ultimately, like, the big things that you think you need, you may not. Um, and it really just depends on your style. So regarding paint, just watch my other video about paint. Um, but I usually use like basics for most of them um, and then a, a gloss enamel to go on top. Um, as far as like, you know, do you need an easel or do you need certain types of brushes or do you need scrapers or do you need, you know, 
like pouring mediums, you know, do I, I use, um, I use, I don't even know where it's at. Um, I use gloss varnish, like high gloss varnish or gloss varnish. I just, again, I really like the shine of, of the paintings. Um, but I would say invest in these, um, get a couple scrapers, just if, if, if you're into creating that look. Um, okay, let's talk about canvases for a minute. Um, that's probably the most important thing. I almost didn't even think about it. So you're going to, okay, when you're starting out, you're going to probably start with some value canvases. Like these come in a package of like five or something, right? And you can, there's a ton of different brands. Everybody has their own. Some of them come in like packages of seven or something. And there's a difference between, there's actually usually three different types of um, of canvases there's usually three quarter and then there's three quarter gallery and then there's high gallery which is like one and a half um sometimes there's even two two inch deep ones but usually you won't see those or, or at least not at a craft store <sighs> ultimately what i'm going to say is you do the best with what you've got okay so if you cannot afford a bunch of high gallery canvases and you're just getting into painting I would not recommend that you go out and buy the best canvases thinking that because you bought a good canvas, you're going to make a good painting. Actually, I <laughs> let, me, let, me, let me point something out to you. This thing right here, this um, painting, is called, I call it where dreams go to die, okay? And the reason I call it that is because there is actually, this, is, this, this layer that you see on top is actually the third layer um, of paint. So it was a painting, and I smoothed it out with gesso, sanded it down, painted over it, um, and it was a line painting, kind of like this this one right here, uh, Metropolis, but I didn't like it. So then I just, I got out of frustration. I just took the paint and just kind of scraped it down over the old one, and it kind of created this weird looking painting that, I don't know, some people like it. I, I think it, I don't like it, but my point is, is that um you know you can like i i bought this this canvas is like high gallery style so it's one and a half inch thick and this canvas is not cheap like this is a 36 i think 36 by 48 like for a canvas that size i think they're probably i want to say like 90 bucks just for that one canvas so this canvas was not cheap and it pisses me off because it turned out bad but my point is, is if you're just learning painting and you don't know like the end result or, you know, you're not good enough that you can just wing it and still come out uh, on like on the good side. Please don't buy good canvas thinking you're just going to make good masterpieces. And that's another thing is like you're going to make pieces that you hate and you're going to make pieces that you like. All right. That's going to happen no matter what. Even I'm, I can only assume even the best artists still have those days where they make things that they hate and then they paint over it. Like artists will paint over their old paintings and if they're just throwing them all away, they're probably running out of money or they either make a ton and they can afford to do that or they, they repaint over their paintings. Like it's, it's, only, it's only one or the other. Like they either have enough money to keep doing that, um, but they do make bad paintings. So please don't think that even the best artists don't make bad paintings or they don't mess up or whatever, right? You're going to make paintings you hate and they're, you're going to make pieces like like this one, right? This one right here and then the essence distilled on the side. Those are my favorite paintings, but I mean, those are a couple of my favorite paintings out of 60, 60 paintings or something like that. So you're going to make pieces you hate. Um, that is going to happen. You probably just Put some gesso over it put like two layers of gesso um this stuff right here if you don't if you're new to painting um this is white gesso uh gesso is the stuff that goes on before you paint and it and it makes the paint adhere to the canvas now if you buy these these canvases like the the cheaper ones um then yes um they come primed but if you plan on painting over it or you ever get to the point where you have to make your own canvases, then you would buy gesso to put onto the canvas, okay? Um, but that's pretty much it. So ultimately what I'd say to invest in is, you know what, brushes you can probably get away with not 
the best brushes. Um, probably get some bottles if you plan on if you plan on writing or doing kind of like that or small lines. Get some uh, bottles. The scrapers are pretty helpful. Um, maybe a roller, but I don't really use the roller. The squeegee, yes. The spatula, yes. Um, if you plan on pouring paint, get some of these or get containers that you can use to shake the paint and then pour from. Um, I use some paint buckets to keep all my stuff wet because as soon as acrylic dries real fast, so as soon as it's done, when I'm done with the tool, then I put it in the bucket. Um, and that's really all I can think of, okay? So I, ultimately, the reason I made this video is just to remind you, just do the best that you can with what you've got. Um, you know, if you can't afford the best of the best, get what you can and make the best of it. And then when you start to make money or you get, you know, really famous, you know, a lot of times I always had the idea that like, this is the best painting I'll ever do. It's not, you'll always make, you'll make cooler ones. You'll discover new techniques. You'll, you'll, you'll make new things. Like there, I'm pretty sure that you could not run out of ideas and be okay. Like you'll, you'll probably be all right. So just do the best that you can on what you have available, put it out to the world and just keep moving. Like, there will not be a such thing as a perfect painting, okay? So that's pretty much it. If you like this video, please like, rate, share, subscribe, and uh, I'll catch you guys in another video. Thanks.